Hey, it's Coach 2K with Coach2K.com. This video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to pick a team to use in NBA 2K. In the years I've been running the league, that seems to be kind of for a challenge for some people. They, they don't know what team that they want to use. I have guys that join the league that I use any team. They don't care. Um, and other guys are like, um, is this team available? Um, some guys are like elite team users. Um, especially the younger guys because they want to they want to make sure they win so a lot of times they'll use an elite team to make sure that they have the best chance to do that and and you got guys like me that are you know basically guys that will use the team from where they're from so I want to share some ideas with you on how I would pick a team uh, based on uh, what I would look for like if you want to kind of take a team and look to master it which is kind of what I recommend to people that they try and do so um, the first thing I like to see is if if you're going to pick a team and you live in an NBA town or near one, that, that that's the team that you would pick. So if you lived in Milwaukee and you watched the Bucks play all the time, it would really make sense that you would use the Bucks. Um, so like I'm from Indianapolis, I've been watching the Pacers since the 80s. For a while, I was a season ticket holder. And, uh, you know, I've been to so many games and watched them on TV and watched guys' careers uh, come and go as the Pacers. And it only makes sense that I would use the Pacers. It'd be kind of strange if you fired up a game with me and you knew all that about me. And then I, instead of picking the Pacers, I decided that I was going to pick the Heat. And, you know, just so I could use LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Ray Allen and have a, have a good chance to win, you'd be like, well, why aren't you using the Pacers? So yeah, the first suggestion I would make is, is that you use a team from where you're from. Now, here's the problem is, is that a lot of teams, just, people don't like them because they're, they're hard to use or they're not as good as some of the elite teams. And so what happens is, is that people don't want to use those teams. They'd rather use um, a team they know they can have a better chance to win with. And I can certainly understand that. Um, but if you're a 2K veteran of the game, I would encourage you to use the team from where you're from. Uh, that's good because it provides a lot of variety. If you live in a town with an NBA team and it's not a big market, um, you're probably one of the relatively few people who will use their team, uh, especially if you're playing other users. Now, if you don't use your own hometown team, the other thing that people like to do, that a lot of times they'll pick a big market team. They like to pick the elite teams. Uh, most of the time, you know, the big market teams are the elite teams. You know, Oklahoma City is kind of an exception. You could say San Antonio is too. Um, if you happen to live in a town like New York and you can use the Knicks, then I think it would make sense that, you know, that's great for you because then you can use a team that's probably a little easier to use and uh, usually has some, um, has some pretty good talent. Same thing with Boston. I know Boston was tough in 2K, when they had Garnett and Pierce and Rondo and uh, Al, I mean, it was really tough to beat those guys. So if you lived in Boston and you used that team, you know, that would be cool because, you know, usually a lot of talent gravitates to those big market teams. And um, so, but, you know, if you lived in Orlando and you, used the Mag and you didn't use the Magic and use the Knicks because they were a better team, then, um, if I had a choice between two guys that I wanted to play, one who lived in New York and was a fan of New York all his life and used the Knicks, I'd probably rather play that guy over someone from Orlando using the Knicks. I'd rather play the Orlando guy from, um, you know, if he, he was using the Magic. So I guess the only exception I would make to this is that if you're new to the game, you're kind of a rookie level player, then I would probably suggest that you use one of the one of the highly rated teams, usually the big market elite teams. And I know when I first started playing the game, I used uh, the Lakers. I played about 100 games the whole season with the Lakers till I won a championship back when Kobe was good on the team. And I think they won a championship that particular year. I can't remember exactly. Um, but after I got comfortable with the game, then I thought, you know, I should probably use the Pacers uh, because it makes the most sense that um, I should use them. And so once I got you know, uh, more comfortable with the game, I decided that I probably sh should decide just to use them. And so I would I would recommend that if you're new, use a big team, 
once you get used to the game, then start focusing your time and effort on, on your hometown team if, uh, if you have one. Now, a lot of times people don't have a hometown team. I know guys have come in the league, I and mean, we've had guys in, in the league that I run from all over the world, Puerto Rico, uh, Australia. I think I have one guy from South America, uh, a guy from the UK, Netherlands, Australia. Uh, we've got a guy in the league who lives in Arkansas. Uh, so these guys, they don't have hometown teams. So if you don't have a hometown team, then you know who do you use? And so it is a little bit tougher there. So I guess it just kind of depends. I guess the first thing is is that if if you don't have a hometown team, then um, you know choose a team that you got some sort of connection with. Obviously, you know a team that you like. <clears throat> Um, but if you used to live in an NBA town, like maybe you lived out in Sacramento for a while, um, it might make sense to, um, you know, use the Kings uh, because you have some sort of connection to that town. I know we've had guys like that in the league before. Um, if you used to uh, watch college ball and there was a guy that was in a university that was close to you and he ended up going to the NBA team and you liked that guy, then maybe that would make sense. You could use that that uh, that team that that guy plays for. Um, you know, maybe there's a team that's, that's geographically close. So, for example, if you used, if you, like the guy in Arkansas, if he lived in, um, in you know, in Arkansas, maybe it makes sense if he used one of the uh, uh, teams in Texas because it's a little bit closer to him. So, you know, if you didn't do that, then maybe what I would suggest is to use a project team. Um, project team be a team maybe that's not as good as some of the as the powerhouses in the league. <clears throat> um, a project team would be a team that not too many people use. There's some teams in 2K that just people just don't use. Um, a couple of those teams, one of them is San Antonio. Very few people use San Antonio. I know in all the time I've been running the league, I've had like <clears throat> one guy from San Antonio appear and uh, even he wanted to trade the guys on his team because we were kind of running a fantasy draft at the time. And you know, he was a season ticket holder, and uh, even he wanted to just dismantle the team. And the Spurs are really good, but they really don't have anybody that uses them. I can think of one guy off the top of my head that uses the Spurs. Um, and occasionally some people will use them. Uh, another team like that is the Jazz. I mean, nobody ever uses the Jazz um, just because, you know, they're not any, any good. Um, and you know, they just don't have any fans. So there's teams like that that just people don't use. And so I guess if it were me and I didn't have a hometown team, I'd probably pick a project team like maybe the Jazz. I used to go out to Utah all the time. And uh, I mean, one time I even met one of the Utah Jazz players when uh, uh, I was out there. So since I got some sort of connection there and it'd be a project, if I didn't use the Pacers, then maybe I'd use the Jazz. Um, I guess if if none of those ideas work for you, then probably what I would do is try and pick a team based on your current skill level. So this is kind of the way I look at it. If, if you're new to the game, obviously you're a rookie player. And if you've been playing a long time and you're really good and, and uh, competitive, then I would consider you a veteran and you're probably even maybe a, maybe a Hall of Fame player um, if you've been playing a ton of time in the game. So I would say based on your skill level, then pick a team that would require your skill level to be good using it. What I like to do at the beginning of every season is they come out you know, with the game and they have the rosters, and I always like to see the ratings they come out with at the beginning. And then you got guys that are rated 90 and 80 and 70 and 60 and 50 and so on. And those guys uh, um, play a certain way. So obviously you got a 90 rated guy Theoretically, what's supposed to happen is, is that that would be an easier guy to use than maybe somebody who's 60 rated. That doesn't mean you can't take a 60 rated guy and play really well with him. It's just that, uh, you know, all things being equal, it's probably easier to use the 90 rated guy. So what I like to do is I like to break down the teams and count how many 90 rated guys they have, how many 80 rated, how many 70 rated and 60 rated and 50 rated, and then how many signature skills that team has, and then kind of rank those teams from 1 to 30 based on that. And then what I do, I like to put them in categories as rookie teams, as pro teams, as all-star teams, as superstar teams, and as Hall of Fame teams. So as an example, 
you know, the Miami Heat, I ranked them number one at the beginning of the year based on the number of, of guys, you know, the ratings that they had. Just because uh, they have those guys, they're easier to use, and I would consider that like a rookie-level team. So if you were new to the game, what I would suggest you do is is use, you know, a team like the Heat just to get used to playing. But if you're a really good player and Hall of Fame player, the Sixers, they don't have any 90-rated guys, and it would be really tough to use them. And... Uh, so you'd have to be a Hall of Fame level player to use them. And so depending on your skill level, if you consider yourself, you, know, you play on pro and you do well on pro, but all-star is kind of tough for you to win on, then maybe you're kind of like a pro level player. And I'd use like a pro level team, like maybe Memphis or the Nets or a team like that. Um, or maybe go a step above just to kind of stretch your skill level a bit to use an all-star level team, maybe uh, like Phoenix or the Bobcats. So um, what I do, I put this in a spreadsheet. And I got a blog post that I'll put a link at the bottom of uh, the video too. And you can have a look at that rating chart. And you can see how I pick those teams. But I, it's kind of like a handicap system. So like if a guy used the eat and he wasn't super tough, he might it might balance out a game if he was playing somebody who was using the Sixers. I mean, it wouldn't be a perfect system, but um, you know it would it would balance things out a little bit. Um, so the other thing is if you do what I do, I like to play against the Hall of Fame CPU and try and knock all those teams off with the team I use. The lower your team is on the talent scale, the harder it will be for you to beat all those teams on Hall of Fame difficulty. And I've noticed that a lot of teams, a lot of guys, they like to they like to switch teams a lot. You know, in my league, I got, especially the guys that are hometown guys, uh, you know, they're constantly going, well, can I use this team now? Or can I use that team? And I've got guys that have used a bunch of teams over the time I've been running the league, they just switch back and forth. And I've noticed that all those guys that switch, for the most part, they play the same way with every team. I mean, even I would do the same thing. I'm kind of a three-point chucker, so I would shoot threes with every team, even if they can't. Like right now, the Pacers really can't shoot threes like they used to. So, you know, I struggle a little bit because I still like to shoot threes. So uh, the play style would uh, make more sense for me to play a team that shot threes. And so... Um, pretty much I've noticed guys that switch teams all the time. They pretty much play the same with every team, um, you know, with a few exceptions. And so uh, it's just another reason really to kind of stick with the team that, you know, one team and try and master it and really analyze those players and look at how they interact with everybody else and try and master every player on the roster as opposed to switching from team to team. You know, in the end, I don't think it really matters what team you use. I mean, you can do well with any team in the league if you work with it a long time and you're like a, an expert with that team. And some teams are just easier to use than others, even if they don't not re highly rated. I know I was using one of the Euro League teams, which isn't highly rated, and I played better with it than I do the the Pacers a lot of times. So, um, you know, it's not an exact science, but it's just kind of one of those things that you can use kind of as a as a as a way to pick a team. So, but once you pick a team. What matters more is that is you get to work with it and you start uh, really digging into that team. And that's really what determines how easy or hard it is to win on Hall of Fame difficulty, in my view, is is just how how well you know that team and then how well you know the opponent and um, how well you game plan. So anyway, those are my thoughts on how to pick a team. Uh, I hope it helps. And if you got any questions, you know, be sure and let me know. And, and uh, I'll put a link to the blog post that I did along with this video uh, in the description of the video. Uh, so, Coach2K from Coach2K.com. Uh, hopefully I'll see you on the court sometime.